What's every what's up everybody? <laughs> Even I'm stuttering already. Guess who I brought with me? Hello the everyone. Tone King. Yep. How how is everyone doing this fine Friday evening? So this is round two. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm really excited about uh the topic we're gonna be talking about tonight. Does everyone know the topic? Yeah, let's see what they say. Yep. So, Philip, how are you? I'm good. You have a good day today? I did. It was very, like you said earlier, it was very busy. Busy yeah. is good. Uh, better busy. busy. Um, let's see. Phil All Smith. right. Yeah, look at that. SRV has a 50K guitar. Do I win? Yeah. <laughs> well, you actually, might, man. Yeah. Now, that was Cheddar. Cheddar. Okay, so let me give you the rules. I have yep. some rules, but we're going to wait a few minutes because, uh, you know, some people are going to be piling on and I don't want to have to repeat it. So we're going to just say hi for a minute, yep. get it going, because um, I got some rules for this game that I think are fair. And then if you guys don't like some of the rules, maybe you guys can group veto it out. Um, so let's that's see. Funny. That's funny. What I said, am I the answer? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Not after you hear the rules. Yeah, the new yeah, it's the new thirty eight thousand dollar Tone King amp and guitar package deal. Right, right, right. <laughs> he wins. Done. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello. <laughs> um, yeah, everybody's like two what live streams today. What are you What are you drinking there, Philip? Anything? I, uh, no, nothing exciting. Have I have ice iced tea going on right now. Yeah, uh, yeah. I uh, my wife is out of town this week so uh it's like double the work <laughs> so right. i've been caffeinating like crazy uh drinking more caffeine than normal um okay hey, so it sees a couple of people are asking what game are we playing um it's so funny who is that no drip one says saguaro high school rules i i think uh yeah that's my high school so i'm gonna say yeah I don't know if it rules though, but it, it, it was the high school I was at. <laughs> it it rules because I don't have a I don't have another high school I went to. <laughs> so uh uh Jared Briggs says, oh, he's talking to Phil Smith about a price of guitar. Oh, okay. I thought they were they were disclosing a, a price yet. So basically I'll I'll repeat it twice. So we'll start now and then we'll repeat it as we go. So today's video is all in fun. Me and the the tone king were talking the other day and i mentioned this and we were talking about it and i said wait we should talk about this live because this mm -hmm. is such a weird and fun topic if you're a guitar nerd i think and here's the uh, good news we don't even really know the answer do we yeah none i didn't do any cheating i don't i don't know Same about you here. but i i did no research uh because it was like a couple days ago we were talking about this that's right um and uh so here's the idea this is the rule we're going to talk about signature artist products so so here's the what we're trying to figure out who is the most expensive artist to be like if you buy their signature products and um i don't think it matters if it's in production or not like the obviously the zach wildless pauls are out of production but you know we generally know what they go for either now or or then um but it has to be a signature product so like for instance santana does have a mesa boogie amp called the king snake but you can't use his dumble because there's no Santana Dumble. You know what I mean? Even though we know he uses it. Mm -hmm. But is the King Snake a Santana signature series? I think when they reissued it, I don't know if they put his name on it, but it was reissued for him. Okay. And that's why we're deferring to you guys. I mm -hmm. figure a couple hundred guitar nerds all collected together with the internet and keyboards in front of you, we could find some answers. You know what I mean? Uh, right. to, to these important questions. <laughs> These are the questions we need so to know. So if you're a fan or not, right. and you want to buy every single piece of an, an artist's signature series gear who has the most amount of street value-wise worth of signature gear. Yes. Who's the most expensive? Yeah. I, and uh, <laughs> see, so okay, so so somebody put, here's the answer, John Mayer or Joe Bonamassa. But, you know, here's what's funny, man. Petrucci... Has, John Petrucci has a $10,000 guitar and he has a $3,500 amp 
So that's 1350. And then he's got a TC pedal. He's got a Dunlop pedal. He's got picks. What else does he have? Does he have some other stuff too? I mean, I mean, that's, that's 14 grand, give or take. So I don't know. And then uh, Jared Briggs is saying the John Mayer Super Eagle. But here's the thing. The Super Eagle, Eagle is 10 grand. So is the Patricia uh, Nomad. So, you know, I, I have to tell you the $10,000 price point is shocking for me. <laughs> yes. I, I remember when, you know, like you, you mentioned earlier about Zach Wilde. You could take a Zach Wilde guitar and they were like four grand. Yes. Know, and it's like, oh, my God, that's a lot of money. Now, like we've not only doubled it, we've hit 10 grand. Right. Well, think about this. Somebody just said Ingve, the Ingve Duck. Remember the the yellow strat reissue that came relict? That was 14 grand. Was it really? Yeah. Well, the EVH, Eddie Van Halen, uh, uh which one was it? it? Was 25 grand. That was the retail, yeah. See, somebody's okay. So Matt Peterson says the John Mayer D4 D45 Martin is 15 grand. So, so do you think it if we just look at the guitar, right? Would you say that um that uh Eddie Van Halen had the most expensive signature series guitar that ever hit the market retail at 25 grand? Or was there <sighs> one that was more than that? I'm thinking he's got to win, right, for guitar. Maybe that's what we'll do. See, we didn't know what we were going to do. We just knew we were going to talk about this stuff. So maybe instead of doing it combined, maybe we should figure out who's got the most expensive guitar. That's what we'll do. The most expensive guitar, the most expensive amp, and the most expensive pedal, right? What else is there besides? I mean, really, who cares about, like, their pickups or their, their cables and stuff? Right. Right? And then see... Yeah, and see, somebody says Joe Bottomos is 59 Les Paul is priceless, doesn't count. But so you know, what we're talking about is signature guitars. It has to be a signature guitar. Like the David Gilmore, perfect example, new 1000 was uh, four grand, right? Four or five grand. So, yeah, so I'm trying to think. So I'm going to say uh, Van Halen, we're going to say 25K for the Frankenstein retail. We'll go off retail and we could talk about what it really goes for later. <laughs> right. I think someone said 200 bucks. <laughs> um, so the, uh, what else, who else has got a crazy guitar? John Mayer. He's got a $10,000, uh, the super Eagle, right? And John Petrucci has got a $10,000 nomad. Uh, Eric Johnson's, I think his most expensive guitar is two grand. Oh, the fit. Someone brought up the Phil X 12 grand. Ah, Phil X. Look at that, man. Good, good old Phil. 12K. <laughs> right? Good for him. <laughs> you know, that's kind of what I was thinking about. I was wondering. I was wondering if one of these guys out there watching. Uh, yeah, Les Paul. <laughs> Les Paul. Now, here's the interesting part. Les Paul really doesn't count as a signature guitar. And well, I forget. We were, talking about, yeah. we were talking about that the other day. And I guess the question is why? Um, I, and I couldn't remember the answer, but I just remember that it's, it's, it's not technically a signature guitar. Maybe cause it was named after a person, not for a person. Yeah, I guess. Hmm. Um, guitar wise too, you know who else? That's what I was going to say. You know what I'm curious about the most about this? I was hoping somebody's going to send in a comment and they're going to find some obscure musician like Adrian blue, right? Adrian blue, his Parker was 10 grand. No, I think, yeah, it was like 10 grand, Adrian Blue. So what I was thinking was somebody's going to find some, some, uh, you know what I mean? Some, some artist that you just not huge, you know what I mean? Mm. But just for some reason has a crazy expensive guitar. Right. Okay. Wait, what did Cheddar some? I saw a good number. I saw Cheddar Kung Pao says 50 to 60 K now, but they were only 10 K originally. What was, what's 50 to 60 K now, Cheddar? You got to tell us again. I'm sorry. I missed it. Or maybe I can go back and find it. Again, this is this is a live hang, but this is also a research project for right. you guys that love homework on a Friday night. <laughs> okay. Um, so, okay, see, okay, here's a good one. Uh, somebody was saying, 
Okay, so Matt Peterson saying Emerald City, which is a music store, is selling the John Mayer Two Rock used prototype amp for 50k. Do we count that? It's a signature amp, right? It's an asking price. At least we'll put it down. So John yeah, Mayer. That's the John tricky thing about price too, right? It's only worth what someone's willing to yeah. pay. Yeah, but that's kind of what we're going after. Is who's even if it's just as crazy as the ask. <laughs> you know what I mean? At least. You know, because if we wanted to, we could like somebody saying Ibanez. Oh, tactical six string said Ibanez Paul Stanley purple mirror electric guitar 7k. So, Paul Stanley, you know, it's amazing by the way. Washburn made that same guitar, yeah, because it kept going back and forth and between it was like, Ibanez and them. It was 1200, yeah, yeah. Um. Let's see, Steve what else? Buys the UV 77 Warfare, seven grand retail. Right? Yeah, so seven grand for Steve I. So, um, 1949 Fender Broadcaster sold for $375,000. Yeah, but that's not an artist guitar. Right. And then that begs the next. So, uh, Frampton's Les Paul. Phoenix on reverb right now for 24k, but is that a Fra is that a Frampton signature Les Paul version or just his Les Paul? Because it's a sign. Because I guess the argument I have on this is, you know, really, what does the signature add to the value of a guitar? Right, a perfect example. Right. I think it it um. I think someone says Slash has been blacklisted. Why is that? The BB huh. King Lucille's. I, I think it does. I think if you have a, well, you know, you know, what's interesting. I think it increases the value of the instrument, but it narrows the, um, the people that are willing to buy that instrument. So, um, Mario Kane is saying the guitar center has a 2004 Steve Ray Vaughan, Steve Ray Vaughan Strat for 50 K. I'll take it. Why not? We'll write it down. <laughs> Jerry Garcia's Tiger sold for nine hundred and fifty-seven thousand dollars. Yeah, is that now? Is that a signature guitar? Is again? Is that the, the guitar he just owned? I don't know. Yeah, because that's a much different thing. I think you know what I mean. It's if you're a lot of money. Yeah, because if it's their guitar they own, there's only one. We're talking more of a like a hey, if I put my name on this guitar, then what? Who can command the most? Right. Yeah, see, Phil, Phil X's Friedman amps, 3200 bucks. You know, I think what's going to be funnier is I think the fight is really going to be tougher in amps. I don't know. See, I, I already have a few. Should we start talking about amps? Because yeah. I have a few. All right, throw, it, so, throw them at me. I don't, I don't know the number. Maybe somebody could look this up. But the Jimi Hendrix Signature Series Marshall reissue that came out about 10 years ago, I'm pretty sure was about $10,000. Oh, that's going to be the winner right there. 10K. Does, does anyone, can someone look that up? It was the Jimmy, it was the oversized cabinets. It was a full stack in, in like that purple, uh, very similar to that purple Marshall that we were looking at. It was a purple full stack Jimi Hendrix tower. And the other one I would, I would say, which was also very expensive was the, um, the Zach Wilde JCM 800 stack. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, well, I can tell you right now, as soon as you said the Hendrix amp is 10K. I think. That's, I think that's what it was. And it, John, and it was signature series. It had his name on it. I mean, jo uh, John Mayer's signature amp is like 6, 7K. Yeah, the J-Mod, right, is five is six grand, right, with for the head. And then the cabinet, it's another 1,000, so 1,100. So it's like, yeah, seven grand. So I thought, man, I thought he was pretty high up there. In fact, um, the um, there was a store in Nashville, not Carter's, but another, the other store. Groons? Uh, it's not Carter's. Not Groons, not Carter's. There's a third one in that, yeah. like, sh that strip. And um, I feel I bad. Actually did, I did a video, and they had that Jimi Hendrix on the floor, not for sale. What was interesting is they had quite a bit of stuff that was on the floor, not for sale. 
Uh, 2006, Jimmy full stack is 6K. Okay, 10, 6K. I thought it was a little bit more. Okay. That's so, still a lot of dough. So John Mayer beats Jimi Hendrix for price of amp. <laughs> that would be that, right? 7K versus 6K. Well, look at that. Reverb has a Marshall Custom Shop 100JH purple Jimi Hendrix for 25 grand. I'm telling you, that Jimi Hendrix today is probably the most expensive out amp out there outside of a Dumble, I think. Right. 25k i know somebody was just saying who pays these prices i don't know you know who it is it's the surgeon <laughs> that grew up loving Jimi hendrix that went that went to woodstock yeah it's me if i win the lottery <laughs> okay well they used uh, to say for a while that like prs was a ceo guitar remember that you've heard that right right ceos buy prs's James Hewitt says Gus G purple Prince 15,000 euro Prince's last custom guitar, but the guy will make them for anyone. If you pay the for them. So 15 K, you know what? I'm shocked. I'm already shocked about I'll tell you what I'm really shocked about how many guitars we already found in the 10 K. I thought there was like four. We already found like eight or 10 guitars that are close to 10 grand. You know what I mean? Um, and again, this isn't like when somebody talks about a Dumble, like somebody just put it, there's a Dumbles for 150 K, you know, I, I get the, uh, I get the concept of, of, uh, you know, not available anymore. Right. You can't, you know, if you want one, that's how you get one. I, I mean, I can't understand the pricing, but I understand the logic, you know, right. It's if you want one and there's none available, you got to pay what you got to pay. But signature product isn't really, to me, it's not about limited. It's just about their signature has been added to it and their changes are added to it. So <laughs> Brian Stewart says cork sniffers and Powerball winners. Yeah. Well, if you become a Powerball winner, you might become a cork sniffer. <laughs> so um, and let's see who else. Oh, hold on. Yeah, Brandon, I'm looking at guitars. You read the notes too? Just looking to yeah. see. Yeah, Headfield, Black Iron Cross, ESP SIG was 10K new. Really? 10k for an esp i could see that so head filled see are, are you shocked i'm already shocked to see how many guitar players have a ten thousand dollar guitar out there you know what i think that maybe some of the oh wait hold on what, what is this esp Jim Phil series 10k i would think that i don't even know who that is know. who is that I don't, I don't know i don't know so hold on a second J june copy i gotta look <laughs> I, I want to start searching myself, but I don't want to be rude and right. Yeah, because you're just like, okay, yeah. I don't know who this that artist is, but that's what I was kind of thinking, right? Thank you, Wagyu. I you're right that there's artists out there. I'll write it down. That yeah, like I said, that probably won't be well as well known, right? Mm -hmm. Um. Because, you know, to be honest, I think I've said this before. I found some artists because of their guitars. Like Adrian Blue, I didn't know who he was. I just saw he had a $10,000 Parker. And I'm like, well, he's got to be something. Hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Um, Dean, there's a Dean USA Dave Mustaine. Holy Grail for 24K. <laughs> wow. Right. Can I get? Can I give everyone a piece of fun fact trivia? Sure. I'm so, <laughs> and I think you know this, Philip. So there was a BC Rich TTK1 guitar. That you knew that, right? Right, I knew it. Only 40 made. That's not one of the most expensive <laughs> signature series guitars ever made. Right. And I think there were 40 made. And then there were 20, I think, of the Diamond TTK2 guitars. Now, do you ever, do you ever like see them? Like, you know, out there and about. Does anyone ever message you and say, I have one? I've seen, I've seen, yes. Um, the BC Rich I've seen floating around here and there on eBay. Yep. Not the, di see, the diamond is half, half the quantity that's out there, you know. Um, Bobby, Bobby Lopez, hold on. He just said uh, he loved your Gibson video the other day. So I thought I'd give you the shout out. Thank you. Can we take a, a, a moment? Could I share that? Uh... Yeah, let's do it. 
do a quick little intermission. So for those that don't know, and, and thank you for that, I did a uh, video of, it was actually an April Fool's video of, hey, I'm selling all my Gibson video, uh, my Gibson guitars. But I wound up not selling them. It was just showing you my Gibson guitars, which was something a lot of people were asking me about. And I can't believe that there was one guitar I forgot to show everyone that I just didn't pull out. And I, I, I brought it out special for this show. This is my RD. I love that color. It looks so great. I, um, I, I don't know how I forgot that I own this guitar. And I wish it was in that video. And you want to hear something crazy? I bought this guitar brand new for about $850, $900. Yeah, because it's got those. Uh, what are those pickups? Something with a B or something like that. They're dirty, um, dirty fingers. Dirty fingers. That's what it is. You know, I, and it goes to show you. Let me see the year on this. I think it's a 07. It goes to show you that you can get a, you know, a, and this is actually a great guitar. You know. Yeah, it looks great. So there it is. Uh, just wanted to share that uh, on your show exclusively because I'm not doing another uh, check out all my Gibson. So <laughs> I'll send everyone over here saying you got to send me the timestamp so they could see the missing guitar on your uh, video over here. I'll timestamp it. You know, so there's a couple questions which I think are reasonable. A lot of people are asking, hey, should we, we should we, does used ones count really because because they're limited now and you can't get them, they they up the value. Up so they're saying, so somebody was saying, uh, uh, you know, basically maybe we should only look at current models for sale. Okay. I think there's so, a lot of ways we could uh, we could carve this up, but let's do current production. Yeah. Not so used. Not used, current production. Like somebody's saying Gibson has a Tony Iommi custom shop for 10 grand. Dude, I am really shocked. How many ten thousand dollar guitars you guys found found in like fifteen minutes? <laughs> I'm shocked that there's a ten thousand dollar new guitar. Yeah, I don't. I, it's shocking to me. Yeah, I'm. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> like I said, well, I, I I was excited when I saw one, and I was like, much, oh. How much were the PRS? Um, Jerry Garcia's Wolf sold for 1.9 million and check out the wall of sound and you'll be surprised of the cost. What is the wall of sound? I've heard a couple of people mention that. Is that a website? No, I think that wasn't it. I don't know. Cause I'm not a, I'm not a huge, you know, I'm not really fluent with that, but I thought, isn't that their wall of amps behind them? Isn't that what the grateful dead's about? That giant wall of, oh, um, I don't know. of sound. Hold on a second. Let's see. Um, and I could be totally wrong. I'm just a guessing. D100 current price is a hundred thousand dollars. I'm shocked. <laughs> yeah, I was impressed. See, I think strats at fifteen hundred is crazy. <laughs> I'm like fifteen hundred for a strat. That's a lot of money. Um, yeah, it's okay. So just so you know, T uh, TLS uh, T TL Smack said. Yes, it's the dead uh, sound system, which is the wall of sound. Got it. Okay. Um. Okay. So somebody says you can charge ten grand for guitars. Sweet. Time to sell some guitars. I'll be rich, right? Yeah. It's, I I don't know. You know, it's one of those things. Like you wonder. You know, they make these guitars. Do they sell those guitars? You know, I, I think this is truly a, a conversation of economics, right? You know, supply and demand. If there's small supply, but there's demand and somebody's willing to pay that, you know? Right. Now, here's the funny part. So so Ryan at RNA Music, hey, Ryan, he said, would you rather have one $10,000 guitar or 10 $1,000 guitars? Me? Yeah, I would take 10 $1,000 guitars. Me too. You know, you know, my, my, this is like, do you want to eat pizza every day for the rest of your life? I don't. Right. <laughs> no, I think the variety 
I, you know what? I think a guitar player can own 10 guitars and never be bored for the rest of their life. If yeah. you think Gibson, the Strat, an acoustic, you know, your shred guitar, your uh, uh, F-hole, you know, semi-hollow, like y- you could get 10 guitars will get you pretty much everything, including some real nice guitars, too. Yes, I agree. Um, and um, uh, especially I think that you really kind of cover a couple of the mainstays and then sometimes you get carried away and we get doubles. You know what I mean? Things yeah. that some, ones that are like them. But um, um, James Taylor said, I will take three $3,000 guitars. Yeah, you know what? All the variables you could come up with are going to be... Um, one or more than one. Yeah. No, he's saying three. So basically he's saying he'll take his 10 grand and buy three $3,000 guitars, basically. Right. Um, and uh, so, okay. So say uh, Michael Costa is saying, okay, current production model, Peter Frampton, Phoenix, Les Paul. Twenty thousand eight hundred dollars. What? Peter Frampton. Twenty thousand eight hundred. Who's that guy? Who's buying that? I don't know. Peter Frampton. I I don't want to minimize his work, but no, no, yeah, uh, yeah. He I, he really has one hit. <laughs> he's so he's almost kind of sort of a one hit wonder, isn't he? Well, yeah. I mean, like, he's got like you do, right? Yeah, I mean that's just that. I think that's his. I think he's one of those artists that was his main. What do you call it? Like a top forty charting kind of mainstream song. But then his right. his really his body of his work is in this other you know my smaller genre of love. You know what I mean? I think that's right. happened to a lot of artists. They get they get one song out that is not really the bulk of their their you know like I said the body of their work. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh, Jacob Allen says Kirk Hammett's signature and natural finish is twelve thousand dollars. I'm on I'm on Sweetwater's website and I went to solid body guitars sorted by the price. The highest price solid body guitar they have is a PRS private stock for thirteen grand. Right. Brian from Oregon says current production Les Paul Billy Gibbons burst twenty five thousand eight hundred eighty nine dollars. Technically. That beats the uh, uh, the the Frankenstrat, <laughs> right at twenty five k. You know what I mean? Yep. And yeah, Billy Gibbons twenty five. I'm gonna write that down. Billy Gibbons twenty five thousand eight hundred eighty nine dollars. You know what we gotta do now before we get off? We gotta say who's got the cheapest signature model before we go. Okay, I'm going to do something real quick. Quick, You ready for this? Yeah. So I just went on eBay, okay, and I typed in guitar. And then I clicked on sold. And okay. And then I sorted by price. So, which means this is a fact, right? Someone actually paid this. Forget about asking price. This is what someone actually paid. The first Kramer guitar, number one, off the assembly line, sold for $50,000. Does it say when? Give you a timeline. February 15th at uh-huh. 4.47 p.m., 16.47, $50,000. So if so you're watching this right now and you bought that guitar, <laughs> <laughs> tell us how it is. <laughs> now, now. There's another one right below that, the Gibson Master Museum. The asking price was 40, but they accepted a best offer and they don't show you what the best offer is. So, right. so let's skip that. Let's go to the, the next fact. It says, which I don't understand this. Stock top quality Les Paul custom for 26,000. I find that hard to believe. Maybe that's somebody laundering money. Uh, it, it, it has to be because it, it's shipping from China. Yeah. Stock, it doesn't even say Gibson. It says yeah. stock top quality LP custom, and it's sold for $26,599.90 from China. It doesn't even say Gibson. So if you're watching this and during your day job, you're a DEA agent, <laughs> you, yeah, you, might wanna, you might want to look into that. I think a drug transaction happened on eBay. <laughs> with the guitar see uh 
let's see reverb i'm gonna do this real quick um, you mind if i do this no please i'll 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 filter comments and uh yeah, okay. like some of some of the guys are some of the people are like tl tl smack said avril lavigne's fender telly which is a squire is uh got to be the cheapest at 225 dollars new that's pretty cheap man just right right above the the 225 somebody was saying cheapest is prs tremani um uh, and then somebody said Esteban's guitar, but I don't know if Esteban really counts as, I mean, he's a signature artist. I mean, so, you know, the guy's got chops. He lives here. He's in, he lives in Sedona, uh, Arizona. So he's, I remember used to, I walked the mall one day and he was performing there. And then I remember like a year later as he was on QVC. So what's the uh, question? What are we, what are we asking right now? Uh, now we're looking at, cause we're just to be fun. We have people out there looking for the cheapest signature guitar. So, Cheapest. yeah. What like, comes to mind? It's got to be one of these. Yeah, someone said like Jim Root Squire. It's got to be one of these Squire, uh, Fender Squires for a couple yeah. hundred bucks. Oh, um, who made the Green Music Man? A Green Music Man. It was a Sterling. I think it had a single pickup. Um, and it was selling new for like 150 bucks. I don't remember the artist. I want to say like Green Day or one of those bands. One of those. I don't remember. Uh, James is saying uh, cheapest American Fender, Steve Ray Vaughan, sixteen ninety nine. So, yeah, that's oh. for, for an American product. Liam said, "How much is Henning's Harley Benton?" That's a good question. It's like four or five hundred bucks. Okay, because it comes with like a catalog of his music. Um, and it's super limited. It's 42 of them. Paul Gilbert has the micro. He That's does cool. 199. Oh, nice. who did that? Who posted that? Who was the name on that? We oh, give... that's it. Tom DeLong. No, that was Tom DeLong Squire Strat. I thought someone got the one. So trivia question. Who made the Sterling? It was green with a pick guard. Single pickup. What, whose signature series was that? Um, I don't know. Did we got it yet? Uh, it said Jack, Jack, uh, Paul. I posted the micro. Jared Briggs said Hinning is not a star. Well, he's a star to me, but no, I'm just kidding. But more importantly, we said signature and it's a signature guitar. It, it counts is a signature guitar because it's his signatures on it. So, I mean, I, I, I like Hinning more than Esteban. <laughs> um maybe there, maybe a question is what how many youtubers have signature series gear made oh we'll, we'll hit it all youtuber okay we'll, we'll hit it all tonight so i just want to give a shout out dirt racer x so you guys know dirt racer x found the 200 dollars paul gilbert signature micro that's the guitar to beat does an artist out there literally have a guitar cheaper than 199 i i don't know how it'd be possible someone's saying tom DeLong. okay so tom DeLong was the guitar that I was referring to. How much was that? I remember that. I was, I, I only know that because I I was actually going to buy it. I liked it. But I thought it was an Ernie Bull, not a uh, not a Fender. No, no was that was a Fender. You're talking about the guy, the Tom DeLong one? That's a Fender. He had okay. the, um, uh, what is that? The Invader. Like It was an Invader copy pickup in there and a Fender. Yeah. Um. Yeah, Epiphone Slash. Yeah, I, I just don't know how anybody's going to find a guitar cheaper than $200 with a signature on it. So. Does SpongeBob I, count? Yeah. No, <laughs> no, wait. Ah, uh, you know, that Paul, uh, Paul Fleischman. Uh, okay, so Paul Fleischman is saying, Billy Sheenan has a four-string shred neck for $149. And I'm going to argue that the shred neck is a practice tool and not an actual instrument. You can't even, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I mean, because, right, that's like, you know. But, that's but like, that was clever. That's a clever That was clever, answer. right, right. Like, I give you points it's for. Got six strings, tuning <laughs> pegs. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so I give you points for, for finding it, but I'm going to say it's a, it's a uh, practice tool, not a guitar. Or bass, I'm sorry. Um. Somebody saying Benji Maiden has a Sterling. Oh, that but, was it. That was it. The Benji guitar. 
That's the one I couldn't think of. How much was that? Uh, let's find out. I'm gonna while they're looking, I'll be looking. That's it, Benji. Uh, it was OLP. That's right. Oh well, yeah, yeah. Before Sterling, so it's a official licensed product. Yes, that was the one I was thinking about. Wow, they're actually quite a bit. Uh, they're uh, on Reverb. They're like three hundred bucks. I think oh, I knew they were like a buck ninety nine. Here, I'm gonna share it real quick so everybody can see it. This is what he's talking about. Yeah, so, that's the one. I love that guitar. Isn't that a great looking guitar? Yeah. Look at that. And it yeah, played real nice. I don't even remember it. Did, did you find uh did you find one currently what they're selling for? No, yeah, on reverb, there's one for $299, there's another for $369. But new, those were like a buck ninety nine, I think. The, but they're uh, at they're long out of production. Yeah, you know what? It's great. Somebody, uh, Chris De La Cruz put Will Ferrell's signature cowboy, cowbell. You know what I love about that, Chris? That tells me how hard you guys have to look to try to find anything to beat 200 bucks. Because I just can't imagine that anyone is going to have a signature. That's impressive. I never thought about that before, that Paul Gilbert's probably got the cheapest artist guitar on the planet now. How much is how much is the Paul Gilbert micro? W 199 Hmm. How are you going to beat that? So, okay. So, Nanya Business says Keith Urban Signature Guitars, you know, the one that's selling QVC, $169.99. We'd have to let that in because it's, it, it's you know, obviously Keith Urban's a legitimate artist. I mean, I get that it's like a QVC guitar, but it still counts. His name's on it. So, $169.99. Then that's got to be the cheapest because I can't imagine you get cheaper than a QVC guitar. How much is the Epiphone Les Paul Special 2? Was there a slash model? And then, oh, you know what? And I think you had one of these. Uh, James is saying the Paul Stanley Micro is the same price at $199. did not you have a bunch of those Ibanez Micros? I do. I have two of them. I have... Yeah. You, I have you, the um you probably know better than I do. I dude, have it made the, me uh, sick. You had them and they they were those things were gone in a minute. I tried to get one after watching that video that day and you couldn't find them. Well, um so one is the destroyer and the right? other one is the Iceman. Yes. And and here's the funny thing, you ready for this? So at the time I had a buddy working for Ibanez and I asked him, I said, "Can you get me two of those guitars?" He said, we don't have them. They're all sold, which right. means only get them from a dealer. He said they came in, they went out. I still have them. And you want to know something? They're not great, but they look awesome. <laughs> Terry Bear found one on Guitar Fetish. He found the Slick SL54, uh, and it's $189. Um, How about the, the least expensive Chapman guitar? Um, I think it's two ninety nine, three three hundred bucks. Hmm. Max Johnson saying Adam Levine has the cheapest. Well, because I think Adam Levine's guitar isn't it like a Target guitar? Oh, I'm gonna look right now because I remember seeing the Adam Levine guitar at Target. <laughs> this is oh, this could be fun. All right, ready? Let's see. We did the exact opposite of what we said we're going to do. Let's find the most expensive guitars. And I think it's because it was... Okay, ready? Hold uh, on. Hold on. I got one. You ready? Yeah. The Roy Clark Signature Acoustic Guitar. How much? $58. Okay, so here's the funny part. Adam Levine Acoustic Guitar, $57.72. Oh, no. Walmart. <laughs> 50 Here. It's just because I got to show you. All right, ready? Let's yeah. see. Here it comes uh, for fun for everyone. Here you go. If you need a signature guitar and you don't have a lot of money, for $57.72 at Walmart, you can wow. have the Adam Levine Acoustic Guitar Pack. It's not even with strap and picks. <laughs> wow. For $57. $57. Wow. <laughs> how's that how's that even possible? I don't know. 
I'm 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 laughing thinking about the fact that we found we found a, a half a dozen seven dollar signature. You know, Philip, now you have to review that guitar. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's. Uh, you know what? Maybe we do need to review that guitar. <laughs> yeah, Mario Kane's like, what picks? Think about this. We you literally. Know you know what's funny? Some buyer in Walmart's going to be like, this is really odd. We just sold like a hundred of these guitars. <laughs> Maybe we should order more. Okay. So Wago is saying that the Hannah Montana guitar on eBay is $29.99. But is that new? Because I don't think they still make Hannah Montana guitars, right? You know, is I it... own one. The electric or the acoustic? The electric. Uh, I have. I have. I lost a little not... respect for you, buddy. Well, no, my daughter grew up with Hannah Montana, so I bought her the Hannah Montana guitar. Um, and we also have the little Hannah Montana guitar amp. I can't throw away a guitar. So, actually, oh. I did throw away two guitars. Two Dean Acoustic that I paid $29.99 for each. They were so bad, I actually threw them out. Be jamming for God said, let me sign a Squire Bullet and I'll be the winner. <laughs> Yes. Um, Hello Kitty guitars. Yeah, I can't believe we found a guitar for fit. Think of this. I am shocked how many $25,000 guitars and how many $50 guitars we found today already. Uh, let's see. James uh, James Shackleford says that action on that Adam has to be the worst. You know, I bet you, you probably get a, you got to have a technic shot. <laughs> you have to do a sharpen my axe on that. Oh, that's yeah. Oh my goodness. I can imagine what the frets probably feel like on that. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, you got to watch how you polish them. Cause they're probably soft brass and you probably just <laughs> they'll come off. Uh, they'll come off on the rig. Yeah. The, uh, just, just read 700 says, uh, but is the $50,000 is that one 50,000 times better than the other? Right? Well, that, there's an argument that, you know, could make us nuts, right? How do you get from 50 bucks to 25,000? Well, I, I, I understand how you could get to 2,000 pretty quickly or 3,000, but I don't get the 25,000. I, I don't understand it either. Um, I mean, same with anything, right? You could buy a million dollar car. I don't get it. Yeah, I. It's you know, I, I. It's called the law of diminishing returns. Like you get to a point where it only costs so much in labor and material. Everything yeah. else is just pure profit. I. Uh, yeah. Somebody says, "Yeah, you should get it and do a sharp, an opposite sharpen my axe. You should destroy it." Damn. Um, well, well, here's something. Can you take $60 or whatever the price was and make that guitar? No way. Not even close. So how, how are they doing it? Well, I mean, it, it's, uh, I, I, well, think I, about it. Like if you went to home Depot, bought the wood, bought the shellac, bought a set of strings. No, not even close. You, you wouldn't even, not even like you, it's like you're, what you're saying already, you've already hit it basically. Yep. So. Uh, yeah, so he says, how about saw my axe? <laughs> uh, um, they, all right, what's the next question? All right, okay, so now we found the cheapest uh, signature guitar on the internet, which we have decided is Adam Levine at $57 and whatever that change was. Um, so which oh, is someone wrote, the Chinese Nuno guitar was 100 bucks at Guitar Center last year. Oh, uh, yeah, well, that was used, though, not new, right? Oh, that was new. Really? I actually, I gave, you know, Andrew Bonica from line six. I gave him mine. Really? Yep. And that was a nice guitar. That was actually a pretty damn good guitar. Well, I'm glad Nuno beat Adam Levine. <laughs> At least he's not in Adam Levine territory. I think um, it was the N1. Do you ever wonder when you see a $57 Adam Levine guitar, if you go to, uh, uh, what's that Chinese knockoff site? What's that place called? Trade oh. Tang or no the other one um aliexpress aliexpress i wonder if there's like a knockoff adam levine guitar there for 30 dollars. right <laughs> half the price why pay 60 when you can get one for 30 crazy <laughs> um okay so 
Um, all right, so we found the cheapest guitar. I think we found the most expensive guitar. Uh, and I think the most expensive guitar legitimately as a production guitar was Peter Frampton at $20,800. That is Does insane. Anyone, did, did anyone find a guitar currently in production, an artist guitar, for more than $20,800? Otherwise, at, at, we, we literally have decided as guitar player community that Peter Frampton is the king of the signature models and Adam Levine... <laughs> Is not the king. He is definitely not. Well, he's a different kind of king. Right. right. He, he's the king of the Walmart shopper guitar. Right. Um, uh, wow. Yeah. That's crazy. So, um, so yeah. So unless we find something different. So if you guys are out there, hold on. Somebody, uh, somebody's saying something about sixty thousand. Hold on. Nope, that's not what I was looking at. So again, guys, just so you know, we're all up the same uh, at the same page. Peter Frampton has a guitar for twenty thousand eight hundred dollars. It's currently currently in production. We're looking for a uh, uh oh no, you know what? I take it back. Billy Gibbons, he's the winner at twenty five thousand eight hundred and eighty nine dollars. Is that new new production? Uh, can somebody verify that the Billy? It's not in production. Somebody say thank you, Michael Costa. You're awesome, man. Billy Gibbons is not in production, but the Peter Frampton is, right? So you guys are the fact checkers out there. Um, um, yeah. See, a Costa DC. Sure, why not? A Costa DC says Peter is a good player, but his signature doesn't command that. I, I don't even understand that. Think about this. I don't even know if I understand. In the irony of it, I don't even know if I understand the two to twenty thousand eight hundred dollar guitar, even less or more than I understand a fifty seven dollar guitar. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like somebody sat in a room at a company and like, okay, what do we make the Adam Levine guitars for eighty nine bucks? They go, no, 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 we'll pay that. We got to get them under sixty dollars, right? And then this, in the same token, somebody was in a room one day and they go, what about Peter Frampton? We can do it for like, what do you think? Nine grand? No, 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 man. 20 grand. That's the number, right? Like who sets the pricing? I want to know who's buying it. I, You know what? I, call me crazy. And I'm talking end user. I'm not talking store. I, I, I would go so far to say, I don't know if they sell more than one or two a year. I, I can't imagine. And and but, maybe that's why. Maybe they're built to order. But like somebody asked earlier, would you rather have one $10,000 guitar? I'm asking you, Tone King, okay? Or 10 $1,000 guitars. Would you rather have one Peter Frampton guitar or 359 Adam Levine guitars? One Peter Frampton guitar. <laughs> All right. <laughs> there you go. I don't know. 359... <laughs> Adam Levine guitars could be interesting. You know what I'd have to get if I bought that Peter Frampton guitar? Trivia right. question. What would I have to get? I don't know. Let's um, see. That's a question. What would I have to get if I got that guitar? What? As soon as I see the answer, I'll, I'll I'll let you know who the winner is. Um. Let's see. Does anyone? Okay. And I'm just checking to see if anyone found anything there more expensive. There it is. Dirt, Dirt Racer X got it. A talk box. <laughs> <laughs> which ironically costs more than the adam levine guitar <laughs> yeah yeah wait i mean you could build a talk box for 20 30 bucks but uh talk all boxes right. are actually pretty cool if you've never tried one oh yeah i have one because um yeah. everybody fake talk boxes at some point that's what i did you know you gotta like you said do you feel like i do you gotta you got to do the talk box. <laughs> oh, you know, you know what actually got me interested in the talk box was, um, uh, it was Zach Wild. He did uh, all all for you, which was uh, uh, done with a talk box. Right. Michael Costa said I couldn't sell three hundred sixty Levine guitars for three hundred sixty bucks. Yeah, it's you can't if you're Walmart. So let's do, you know, because you mentioned about, uh, we mentioned Phil X. I mentioned my, the two guitars that I, right. um, we did. Let's do YouTuber signature series stuff. Uh, okay. What, what are we going to do? Figure out who's got one? Who's got one? <clears throat> so, so this like, is, go on. So, <coughs> okay, you, you set the rules. So that I have the um, rough idea, but you set the rules. Well, it's going to be tricky because 
to me, like when I think of Phil X and I think of Pete Thorne, they're YouTubers, but are they YouTubers? I mean, you know, they also have a life outside of YouTube as well for, for their uh, credibility. But but they have prominent YouTube channels. Phil X, it was, you know, and, and I don't know if this is true, but Fred at Americana is what put Phil X on hmm. the, the YouTube map, right? So that's what he, he told me. That's that's how he, yeah, that's what he told yeah. me. Yeah. So I think we could call him a YouTuber. There we sure. go. Tom Quayle, Martin Miller. So let's yeah. go through the list. Every, okay. Any YouTuber, you know, of prominence, right? Right. So um, you could say, you know, Zach Wilde has a YouTube channel, but that's not what we're, you know, he was established yes. before YouTube, right? Yeah. So, so Rabia Massad. Rabia. Um, we got um, Henning. Rob, Rob Chapman, Henning. Chapman. Uh, Fluff uh, has the Balagher. Fluff. Uh, Jared Dines. Jared Dines, Rob Scallon, Ola England had two signature series, two companies, his own. Yeah, Rob. And Washburn. Ola. Rob, Frog Leap. Uh, Leo, yeah, Leo just Leo. got one. Robert uh, Baker. Uh, yeah, Robert Baker has a, a, a – So a, someone said Stevie T, but I don't think Stevie T has a signature series carbon. He, he just plays carbon. Yeah, he's a Kiesel artist, and he plays That's what Kiesel. I meant, Kiesel. Yeah, yeah, but, but he doesn't he, have a signature series. He doesn't have his signature on it. He's not a just like um, you know who else is Mary Spender? She's a signature, or she's an artist with uh, uh, Vigier, and they promote her, but she doesn't have a Mary Spender guitar right. yet. You know that I know of. Maybe it's in the works, but I don't know. So I um, had the Diamond and the BC Rich, but they're out of production. So does that count? I guess it could count, um, right? Sure. It, why it, not? Ha it had existed. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, Ola uh, we counted as Washburn. That was very prominent, even though right. he's now with Solar. Yeah, yeah, Pete Thorne. Good, I uh, think. Yeah, Robert Thorne. Baker. Yeah, we Robert said that. Robert Baker right. has the Acacia signature. Right. Um, who else? Who else has a signature guitar? Um, Henning. So Chris, uh, so uh, Ryan's on here. So. Yeah, RNA has a signature CMG guitar. That's interesting. I might count that because it. I get it. It's for his store, but it is a signature guitar for the store, and he is the store, and he has a YouTube channel. So I'm gonna give it to RNA Music. Okay. Um, that they Keith, have a Keith Keith Merrow. Keith Merrow. Keith, oh. Keith Merrow has the Schecter. Yeah. Which he, is a bit, which is an awesome guitar. By well, he's the way. got like ten Schecters, right? I, when you go on their website, I feel like every third guitar is a Keith Merrill model. And the only reason I noticed that was every every single Schecter guitar. I go, oh, I love that. It was his model, right? Because like, he does it in all those Lamborghini colors. Yep, the Lamborghini blue and the orange. I was, oh, I was drooling. Um, Vivaldi has the Charvel. Angel Vivaldi has the Charvel. Uh, who's that? But I don't know. That's but does Angel have a big YouTube channel? I think he does. Yeah. Do you want to count him? Yeah. Let's throw we can always, in there. Yeah, we can always disqualify people. It's our it's our yep. it's our list. Sure. <laughs> um uh so who else, guys? Who we missing? We got uh Phil X, we got you know, the Tone King, we got uh Rabir, we got Henning, we got Chapman, Fluff, Jared Dines, Rob Scallon, Ola England, Leo uh from Frogley, Robert you know, Baker, Philip. Yeah, you you have some fenders with McKnight. I do, the, I do have. Yeah, like kind of in the RNA music lineup. But right. I I don't see. Here's why I would disqualify that. That was way before I had a YouTube channel. Okay, so it had nothing to do with. So it wasn't YouTube that got you there. No, in fact, the only reason it has my name on it is because we sold a lot of them, and they just started putting our name on right, it. Right, right, right. <laughs> they do that for Wildwood guitars and other stores too. They just said, hey, you, you sell enough expensive guitars, they'll stick your store name on it. Um. So Lee Anderton from Anderton's has the oh uh, yeah the, the Chapman yep yep Anderton um, and Andy James has Andy the James? Um, uh, Schechter right so, um, I, everyone's saying Dave Wallman I don't know if Dave Wallman has a signature series piece of gear not that I know same of. thing with Scott Grove if he has one I'm not aware of it. If yeah. he does have one, like Scott Grove has guitars that he's had made for him, right? And they're amazing, but uh, it's not like a production signature. Series. Yeah, it's not like the Scott Grove model that you can buy and I could buy. You know what I mean? And I think maybe that's just the qualifier we'll use. If it was available for sale for somebody, and at least one person bought it, 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. And I know Henning, uh, he hasn't sold one yet, but trust me, he's he's going to sell his 42. I'm, I have no doubt about it. Um, uh, uh, Shane, Shane in the Blues doesn't have one. Nope. Uh, he doesn't have uh, Greg Cock. See, Greg Cock was definitely established way before YouTube. I mean, the guy wrote How Loner Book One for or re, did the rewrites for it and stuff. How many YouTubers do you have on that list? Is not oh the DM oh. Drive. The that's DNM. not a that's not a guitar, but we'll, we'll do it. DM Drive. I have it. I bought it from over there at DM Drive. Um, uh, who else? How, how many do you have on your list right now? Uh, okay, we got you, Rabir, Henning, Chapman, Flo. Oh, I'm not counting them. I don't know. Why. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 20. 20. There's 20 YouTubers with a signature guitar. Nick Johnston. Nick Johnston. Yeah. The heck, that one's one of the most expensive ones, too. Nick Did you have Fluff on there with the Ballet? I have Fluff on there okay. with the Ballet Gar, yeah. Uh, yeah, we had Martin Miller. Um, you know, I feel bad because I can't say his name, but there's a, a there's a YouTuber whose channel is bigger than both of ours, uh, and he's a really good channel, and I'm a subscriber, so I'll pull it up uh, real quick. He just announced he's got an artist model with um, uh, the Ukrainian company. Who's the Ukrainian company? Uh, TK? What's um, um, uh, uh, Universum. Universum? Yes. So hold on. Oh, did me... you you have Tom, you have Tom Quayle on there, right? I have Tom Quayle on there. So there, there is a channel and it's the problem I have is it, it's one of those channels where the spell, it's like Henning's, the spelling is strange. Mm. Um, hold on. Let me find it. Phil, it's great. While, while you're looking that up, Phil Smith, you mentioned someone and I, can you uh, put that back on the chat? Wait, what is it? I, I, the name went, um, too quick, but Phil Smith had someone on there. Okay. Hold on. Some of these I never heard of. Dobi Doss. Okay. I don't know who that is. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Yes. D- Dobi Doss. Is that's how you say it? Dobi Doss uh, is a great channel. Yeah, 173,000 subscribers. Great channel. Great guy. Um, and he announced. I saw a video of his a couple weeks ago that he's got his own Universal guitar. So they're they're making Mateus, it for him. Mateus Asado and Mark Halcombe. I, I don't. I'm not sure. Do you know who they are? No, but. You say Mateus has a signature, sir. But does Mateus? Was that did that come from YouTube? Did he have a prominent YouTube channel? Like did did the signature guitar come from his prominence on YouTube? Yeah, because that's what we're looking for. Did, did, we're looking for people who use their YouTube cred to get their to get right. their signature. Um, like there's no way I would have ever had a signature guitar had I not had a a, a, a YouTube channel. Right. That's that's the the key thing here. Yeah, and Most like I've, that, yes, Instagram. Instagram and YouTube. Throw it down. We could always vet it later. Yeah, meta modest. How do you say it? One more time, uh, Phil, if you don't mind. Can you throw that up one more time? Uh, Mateus. Yeah, he said Mateus. M A T E U S. I gotta check out. I gotta check him out. Yeah. Um. Let's see. I think you. I think you have the the, the main list. Yeah. Mateus tra- Asado. A S A T O. I'm gonna put that on there too. Matt Heafy didn't come from YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> it's thrown up uh, Ace Freely, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, oh, oh, Justin Johnson with the shovel guitar. Do you ever see that dude? Yeah. Now is that a signature guitar? Can you buy that? I think you can buy the shovel. Yes. Oh, well, then we're doing it. What's the name I again? I saw it in the back of a ma- one of the magazines. And I saw him play live at Nam at the Beat Buddy booth, and the guy rocked the shovel. It was, what? It was crazy. What's the, what's the name again? Uh, if someone, some, uh, I don't remember. Can someone repeat the shovel guy again? The guy rocks a shovel. Um... What a uh, Justin Johnson. Justin Johnson. What about uh, Misha Mansoor? Do you think his he's, prominence? No, because yeah, but I mean, he's definitely because of periphery. I mean, that's okay. where he gets it. Okay. You know, I mean, yep, yep, yep. I mean, got it. I mean, keeps saying JD five hundred four. Do you know who? Yeah, that is? you know what? I'm gonna write it down because you're right. It's got to be one of the most. And what I find is funny is every time somebody mentions somebody on YouTube, I don't know, I go and look and it's always funny. I go, oh, I have been watching that person. I just right. didn't, 
you know, just haven't committed the name to memory yet. Okay, so Davey 504. And even Terry, Terry, Terry just confirmed. He gave the link. So if Terry said it's real, it's got to be real. It's real. Yeah. David, you know, Dave Hollingsworth has the Chapman bass. So Bobby uh, Lopez, Samurai guitarist, uh, the hockey stick guitar is fantastic. However, that, I don't think you can buy it though. Oh, you said LOL. Okay, you got that. Yeah. Arante, nope. She's that, was, that, was, that was a fun list. Yeah. Um, and again, uh, enlightening a lot longer than i thought it was going to be right yeah. i was like ah six names you know right no that's like we 25 names how uh, about so female signature series gear hold on before we get to that we got to play the next round which okay. is the fun right here's the next round which youtuber has the most expensive signature guitar so here's the easy part um well, Chat chapman just made those imported Oh yeah, his new English models are gonna are in the three grand range. Yeah. Um. Well, here's the deal. Let's start with the easy part. Pete Thorns is thirty five hundred bucks. Okay. So that's that's gonna be a price tag. That even even Robert Baker's um Acacia isn't thirty five hundred. You know I'm what I mean? Go get another iced tea. Hang on. And Ola's are affordable. Ro Rob's is affordable because it's a Chapman. Fluffs is a, uh, the Balaguer is a, a great price uh, uh guitar. So it's again, that's in the, the twelve, thirteen hundred dollar, fourteen dollar range. Hennings is under five hundred bucks. Rabir, the Tone Kings were uh, affordable. Um Lee Anderton's uh, Town oh, so Phil X. Phil X has the most Oh, expensive. he wins. Yeah, Phil X wins the most expensive. <laughs> hey, who did that? Uh Chris Santos? Sorantos? Someone, yeah, no, Chris. Was, yeah, someone had yeah. it up there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, so Phil X wins. And then after that, there's it's gonna be like Nick Johnson. Um you know what's funny though, Nick Johnson fifty five hundred. Wow. Yeah, and so you know, Davidas, his guitar is going to be expensive because Universal guitars are expensive. They're in that five six thousand dollar range, and his. Do yourself a favor, go to Davidas's uh, channel and watch his signature guitar. And I say this with a lot of love because, I, like I said, he's an amazing player, a great guy, and he he got a, a lot of beating for it on, on the comments because I kind of agree. It is the ugliest guitar ever, but in Can a you, fun, cool way. You know, what was the what was the name? I'm going to look it up real quick. Dovidas, D O V Y D A S, and I'm probably saying it wrong. And if I am, I really apologize, man. So, um, yeah, Ryan Bruce Fluff, yeah, fourteen hundred dollars. So it's Phil X for sure. Um, so, uh, <laughs> so, and is is Ivy Zib? I don't know, man. Said all overpriced junk. Well, you know they. There, there's there's always truth in in, in in any kind of statement like that <laughs> right uh yeah and phil smith you're right uh phil x is not mainly from the internet but you know even i'm just going off of what phil said phil told us at GitCon that's pretty much what you know he's kind of like phil x is kind of like the guitar version of that the filipino guy who sang for journey they found right. him off they found it. So, you know, he said it. They found him off YouTube. So that's why we're kind of putting him in the YouTube pile. We know he's not really in the same pile, but, you know, so. Yeah, I'm Pete Thorne, $3,500. Okay, so so that was good. Uh, and, oh, wow, the modest uh, Mateus Asatu is $3,500. Same as Pete Thorne's. Keith wow. Merrill. Uh, the RNA ones are like $1,500, right, Ryan? So those are... <laughs> You're you're more affordable, fourteen hundred bucks somewhere on there. You have to comment where you're at with your guitar. Uh, let's see. Hey Phil, FYI, this is from Ryan. Uh, if you don't already know, iOS YouTube app supports Super Chat on Apple. What? Go back and Apple Pay now. Love your content. Keep up the good work. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, Keith Marrow. Somebody's saying they has a seven thousand dollar guitar too. So. Wow. The uh, Dell Weber said, "What started these topics, man? We just decided we wanted to talk about money and guitars and people who give command it for no reason, and it was actually so. You know, this entire video is because me and TK were talking about this this week, and 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 we started the discussion. And I said, look, wait, can we do this on my channel this weekend? Because I I just enjoy stuff like this so much. This is actually where I think my nerd, you know, I get the most nerdy. Yeah. Um." So, uh, see, Super Motor Cat said signature models are weird. You know, what's funny to me is I bet you if you look at everybody's age, 
their age will dictate how what they think about signature guitars because forever signature guitars were for posers right you what know you, what i mean tell me tell me more okay I'm not following you there. well i mean think about this for a long time people you didn't you didn't play a signature guitar you didn't play an eddie van halen guitar because then you'd go up on stage everybody expected to play yeah. like eddie van halen right and you know what never really happened for the longest time artists didn't play other artists guitars that was a right yeah to me and there's probably a different you know everybody's going to have a different first experience of course and if you guys want to share yours that's great mm -hmm. my first experience was poison when i saw cc deville in a video he had a steve i gem the yellow gem mm -hmm. and i remember that when i saw that on mtv i was thinking he's playing a steve i guitar like that was such a weird thing to see a dude playing you know an artist playing another artist's guitar you just didn't see that you know you, you you bring up a good topic so what signature series guitars have broken have have been played by like have been legitimized right we're gonna exclude the less pulse we already keep saying that so i would say you're right like the gem we've seen other people play that gem yeah absolutely the nuno i would say i've seen other artists play the nuno yeah um, um that's a tough one it's oh to... zach wild okay so zach wild has played um dime, dime daryl dime big daryl guitars so yeah. that's that's crossed over right yeah so what other guitars have crossed over well, think of this. You can find a video on YouTube very easily of Joe Bonamassa in the studio using a John Petrucci Music Man in the studio. So that's crossed over. Yeah. It's been legitimized. If it's being played by another mainstream artist, it's crossed over. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's like uh, in, in RNA Music saying Randy Rhodes. Yeah, of course, right? That's another guitar you see. Everybody plays the Rhodes. Yeah. Right? So... PRS Tremontis. Yeah. It, it, uh, Drew Smith, good point. John Maris uh, did, did played on stage. He's playing the Frankenstein Strat. Um, Wolfgangs. Yeah, Wolfgangs are... De uh, the first time I saw a Wolfgang in person uh, was being played by Neil Zaza. You know, he was playing on stage. I didn't even really recognize it as a... a I didn't know what it was. Hmm. So, um, but that happened right before that. Just artists didn't play other artists' guitars. And right. Yeah, Brian from Oregon says John Five plays Buck Owens signature guitars. Yes. Well, John Five plays every Telly ever. He has like one of the biggest Telly collections like in the world, I think. Um. Oh, Chris De La Cruz says Pete Townsend exclusively plays the Eric Clapton Strat now. All right, right. So, yeah. So it's it's not weird anymore. Someone said, "What was the first signature series guitar?" Um. Yeah. Who's who's? You know. My like, gosh. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> right. You I have mean, to break it down of like in nineteen in the eighties. And the problem with that is, you know, as soon as you say the answer, somebody's going to find some pre, you know, that precursor that a little bit, and then yeah. you know. To slam me for being wrong so there's no way to to be happy you know um but but uh actually the easier question is uh kind of like elvis popularized the blues you know through rock and roll music kind of thing right you know uh who popularized the signature guitar who i think it would be to me it's eddie van halen right you know it's interesting you don't see signature series cars it's nope. funny because the guitar industry follows the automobile industry, right? It's right. inspired by like the cut. Like, by the way, did everyone does do people know what the silver skies are colored after? Yeah, uh, I know the answer. Does anyone else know the answer? How did you know that, Philip? Uh, because I'm too nerdy. Can I tell the answer? Or? Yeah, let's see if someone throws it in the comment first. There it is. Phil Smith. Yeah. <laughs> I am not surprised that you know the answer. It's funny. They went after the number one, you know, the 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 the, the hottest car company out there today.
Yeah, well, I, but I, I thought there's no signature series cars. Uh, well, they did. You know why? Because they <laughs> no. What was it? Who did Tiger Woods had a signature Lincoln, didn't he? And oh, then Buick. He had the Buick. Buick. Yeah, he had a Buick. There was That's that. Right. That's and right. um, they. Yeah, so I mean. <laughs> Oh, Fender was actually in a uh, Volkswagen for a while, right? Yep. I think John Mayer did the ad. Oh, did he? I'm pretty sure John Mayer did the ad for the Volkswagen car with the, the Fender, Fender sound system. I bet you if you guys Google it, you'll find it. Like, I don't mean ad like a, a ad print. I mean like a commercial. Right. <laughs> like on TV. Um, I'm pretty sure. Uh, so... The uh, okay, That's right. slashed at the first act with Volkswagen. Oh, yeah. Um, Wago I, I, says, go Oh, sorry, Wago says the Gibson Nick Lucas special acoustic is $1,925. See, wow, I, I think we should do female signature series gear. Okay, let's see if we're, I'm wrong three for three, because I'm thinking that's a short list too. But then again, let's let's see what are we gonna do? I'll, figure, I'll, figure out. I'll throw the first one out there: the Joan Jet Signature Series Melody Maker. See, I didn't even know they made that. Yep. <laughs> um, let's see. There was the Bonnie Rate Fender Strat. They did that. It was a yep. very short short or, lived. Orianthi or PRS. Someone yep. said. Yep. Uh, Orianthi. St. Vincent. I have that one. It's a good guitar. Um, Avril Levine Telecaster. Lizzie Hale Explorer. Yeah, that's new too. She's yeah. Um the Lita Ford Lita BC Rich. Ford, uh yeah. Lita Ford BC Rich. That's right. Um the uh, remember we were talking about this the other day too. Vixen, they were endorsing uh the, the guitar player Vixen had uh um uh, uh, Aria Pro. Aria Pro. But ah, but not a signature model. Okay, so it doesn't count. Doesn't count. The Daisy talking... Rock. Did the the Bangles actually have a Daisy Rock signature series, or did they just play Daisy Rock? I think they just had them. I don't remember there being a signature model. Someone write Ian Vay Malmsteen Stratocast. <laughs> it counts. We'll put it in. <laughs> Taylor Swift. Taylor. There you go. That's a good uh, one. Taylor Swift. Yeah. Um. You know who else too Bonnie, is Bonnie Raitt. Yeah, the Bonnie Raitt Strat. And yep. then um, now Nita Strauss, right? Mm -hmm. Nita Strauss this year. She's current. She's a new uh, Ibanez model, um, which plays amazing. And her pickups sound great. They just announced today. Actually, Nita Strauss today they announced that the her cut her signature pickups are available through DiMarzio. Hmm. And they're like they're all they're 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 those carved aluminum topped whatever metal top pickups in their satin nice. black. They look great. Uh, Nancy Wilson. Did Nancy did Wilson she, have a signature model? I don't know. Jennifer Batten, I think, did, right? She had a Washburn. I'm pretty sure. Yes, because actually I know she did because it looks kind of, looked to me kind of like the Wolfgang, but different, right? But uh, Nancy, yeah. Nancy Wilson, Les Paul. Did she have a Les Paul? I don't know. Can someone confirm that? Yeah. Can Yeah. Who? Where's our fact checkers at? Oh, you know what? Super Motocat, Motocat. You just gave me an idea by just saying the word carbon. You know, it's Nancy more important. Nancy Wilson Ovation. Nancy Wilson Ovation. You know what we got to do on the female side? Oh, Susanna Hoffa had a Rickenbacker, but was it a signature series Rickenbacker? So, so Alan said Bangles did have a signature series guitar. Maybe just put down the Bangles and we'll look that up. Okay. Nancy Wilson Nighthawk. Phil Smith said Cheryl Crow had a Gibson. Nancy Wilson had a Takamini. Okay. Takamini. Um, Nancy Wilson Nighthawk. Um, Courtney Love Squire. Did she have a Squire? Uh, you know what? I thought I remember Courtney Love having a guitar when she was with... Was the band Hole? Is that what she was with? Yes. Right? So it was on the coattails of Kirk Cobain when they, you know what I mean? When Nirvana was at their height and all of a sudden she popped. I Mary remember, Kay I, Fender. Now that is that? That was a signature uh, series. For, are you, really? In, in TV White. 
Mary Kay. I think it actually oh. had her name on it. Matthew Roach is saying June Carter from the Carter Sisters, Johnny Cash. But did she have a signature guitar? Because that's the trick. I mean, they can be known for a guitar, but did they get their signature on a guitar? Um, Nancy Wilson ovation legend. Uh, Nancy Wilson has a signature acoustic, not a Gibson Les Paul. Oh, okay. And um, Dale Weber saying, uh, no, sorry, Carlos uh, uh, is saying Sarah Longfield has a Strandberg. Yes, ha she does. But is that a signature Strandberg? I know she paints them. You know what I mean? It, they're like hers. Is that a signature guitar you can buy, a, Str a Strandberg? I don't think it is. So here's here's what brings up the second thing, and I don't I want to keep seeing if we can find somebody. Susan Tedeschi, she had a Fender. Let's see. Terry sent you a link. Courtney Love Signature Vista something or other. Where did he send the link to? It was in the chat. Oh, hold on. I'll find I it. I think we already have the uh, St. Vincent. Yeah, here it is. So Nancy Will Wilson had an Epiphone. And Nancy Wilson of Heart dropped by... Huh. The article he sent me is how they dropped her. Nancy Wilson of Heart fame dropped by Epiphone booth at NAMM. Oh, dropped by the booth. Okay. On Saturday, January 22nd. So that's interesting. So she has an Epiphone. They, uh, yeah, it's, so there's a, more artists than I thought, right? Yep. Um, and so if you think about it, it's really interesting to me how many companies, not how many companies have one, how many companies don't have a female signature artist? Hmm. That's what I find more interesting. Because since there's more than I think, right? Obviously, Nita's with Ibanez, right? Yeah, so and, so confirmed, Susanna Hoffs from the Bangles did have a signature series, uh, Rick, uh, Rickenbacker. The that's Liz Hale. Yeah, that's as, the Gibson. As we, as we already know. Yeah. The Runaways was um, Joan Jett, right? Yep. You know, I like that guitar. Which one? The Joan Jett. Orianti, of course. Right. Uh, Bonnie Raitt. Did you get the Bonnie Raitt strat? Yep. That was one of the first ones we talked about. Okay. So, Lita Ford Warwick. Yeah, so it's pretty much, I think we got them all. Um, yeah. So, more than I thought. How many did you get? Um, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So, so. So unless we can think of more, there's less female signature artists than there is YouTuber artists. Isn't that crazy? That's that is crazy. crazy. Yeah, it's not a, it's not a, right? It's not a great. No, it's yeah. not. Mary Ford, Les Paul. Terry saying, also Cheryl Crow had a signature Telecaster? I don't remember that. Why don't I remember that? So... What about who are the top? Um, I don't know. It's crazy. There's got to be more. Yeah, try, I'm trying. What I'm was, thinking. Was there, like, wasn't there like, um, you know, like there's the Iron Samantha Maiden. Fish. Hold on real quick. I didn't mean to cut you off. Uh, oh, no, Samantha Fish. What was the guitar? Because you guys keep mentioning that name. But what was the guitar? What brand? Does Winger count? How about half the 80s bands? We can count them a little bit. Um, all right. Sorry, TK. Go on. I, no, no. I don't, I don't remember what I was saying. I'm just reading through the comments here anyway. So, Vixen. Yeah. Yeah, it's... Um, 
So, so Wagyu says Japanese female guitarists have a ton of sig signatures that you've missed. Yeah, but I don't, I don't know who they are. Yeah, because you, you know, the problem is that it's not even a think about this. To be fair, Wagyu, uh, Japanese female artists, heck, Japanese, Japanese male artists aren't predominant here in the U.S. I mean, they're yeah, they're Japanese amazing. Have their own metal scene. You yeah, know, and, and big it's names, a, but they're not popular here. No, I mean they're amazing. Like I went and saw um. I went and saw loudness when they came to the States uh, for the second time, like six years ago. But I mean, you don't see a whole lot of Japanese bands come through. Oh, How so Samantha. Oh, Hannah, Samantha Hannah Montana. Does that count? <laughs> well, we're desperate at this point. So yes, Samantha fish has a Delaney guitar. Hmm. So, and uh, I'll have to check. S Vigier. Am yeah. I pronouncing that right? I don't know. If we can get close, it's better. It's... Oh, Vigier. Vigier. Yeah. Grace Potter. Had a signature flying V? Really? All right. I believe you, James. Grace Potter, a signature flying V. Did Dolly so. Parton have a signature? Oh, Nika Stringfield of Iron Maidens has an Avenger Schecter. Oh, does she? Oh. I don't know. Uh, have the Miku pedal. How about the Miku Korg pedal? Well, like, think of this. Courtney Cox doesn't have a signature guitar either. Oh, but she does play a comparison. I just don't think she actually has a Courtney Cox comparison guitar. Anyone want to search that for us? That'd be awesome. It's Courtney Cox, and uh, she's with comparison guitars. So uh, I don't know if she has an actual signature model, though. Yep, we already got Lita Ford. Yeah, mm. that's actually a nice warlock, though. Lita Ford, warlock. So, um, when we got that was, Lizzie, that was that was fun. Yeah, we got Lizzie Hell. Um, so yeah, how so about, it was. How about you, you? Ready for the next one? Huh? Signature series left-handed guitarists. Oh, that. <laughs> <laughs> We're not even gonna do it. The lefties are gonna be mad, but there's no well, way. Here's the question: uh, Is there at least one? Oh, of course. Uh, Zachy no. Vengeance from Avenged Sevenfold has a, a lefty signature. Does um, he? No, no, yeah. no. But does he play lefty? He's a lefty, and he has he has a signature guitar. So that's the question: Is there a lefty that has a signature series? Zachy Vengeance from uh, from Avenged Sevenfold for sure. Oh, Hendrix. Hendrix Kirk was a lefty. Kurt Cobain. Yep, he was a lefty. Jimi Hendrix. Yep. Nick Johnston. No, but Nick Johnston doesn't play left-handed, right? Yeah, I don't think so. I think he plays righty. Well, there's a lot. Apparently, there's a lot. Paul McCartney's left-handed. And, and update, Courtney Cox has a new signature. So, look at that. All right. Good for her. She's a really nice person and a great guitar player. Um, Tony Iommi is left-handed? Yeah. Yeah. I thought I so, but that. I don't know if he plays left-handed. But he, yeah, he does. He's left-handed. Hmm. Okay. Paul McCartney, that's a bass player, but we'll take it. And he plays guitar sometimes. Tim Armstrong. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, definitely left-handed, left-handed. Heck, man, it's one of the few left-handed acoustics out this. there. This is actually quite the more more than uh, I thought there was. Yeah. In the blues? Oh, yeah, Shane. That's right. Yeah. You know what? You know what, Shane? Take this advice. Uh, since you need to make a left-handed YouTuber signature guitar because you'll be the only yes, one. You'll be the right. one left-handed signature YouTube guitar out there. And you'll sell a ton of them to all the left-handed guys yep. that watch YouTube. Yep. <laughs> uh, the, <laughs> the, uh, yeah, uh, Albert King. Yeah, so more again, more lefty. Eric Gales. Albert Collins. Right. <laughs> so <What? laughs> did you see what I saw? Okay, where is it at? I'm gonna put somebody I want to get the name because they deserve the credit. Hold on. Uh, if I lose it, I'm gonna be so sad. But I, I remember what it said that made me laugh. Somebody put Lefty McLefterson. <laughs> I don't know why that made me laugh. So yeah, there's this the guitar player Lefty McLefterson. Um Oh, the yeah, the, uh, Otis Rush. Yeah, 
See, Liam says Shane does have a signature left-handed guitar from In the Blues. Does Shane have a signature guitar? If he does, I'm not aware of it. Yeah, how would I not know that? Maybe because I'm right-handed? Michelangelo Badio definitely does not count as lefty or righty. <laughs> um, so, oh, okay, last subject, then we'll call it. How about okay. this one? And it's from George. Who has the who has too many signature guitars? Too many. Yeah, like, like he's saying like signature series. Yeah, like it's just too many. Like there's like uh, like John so, Petrucci, he's saying John Petrucci makes a lot of guitars, right? Signature how guitars. About, how about who is just makes too much signature series stuff? Oh yeah, yeah. That's better. I like that. Then we can we can but, so Zach Wilde had pedals, amps, and guitars. Ah, picks, cables, and pickups, and speakers. Zach, Zach Wilde has speakers. Yep, he has the eminent speakers. Then he had he was monster cables. He had his own picks and his own EMG pickups. Oh, right. EVH. The guy has sneakers. <laughs> The guy has striped striped <laughs> sneakers. sneakers. I yes, sneakers are gonna be tough Kid, to beat. No, kiss, 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 kiss has lava lamps. <laughs> kiss, has, kiss has toilet paper. Yeah, you could buy kiss toilet paper. Uh, I think kiss wins it. Yeah, you could uh, buy a kiss coffin. You could buy a kiss coffin. Oh, that's right. Yeah, it's got to be Kiss. Oh yeah, who who? Yeah, <laughs> how do you how do you beat them? I don't know. <laughs> the Kiss casket. Damn. Uh, let's see. Um, who, who else? The Kiss has the pinball machine. <laughs> yeah, pinball machine. <laughs> Joe Bonamass has bobbleheads, but that's just not enough. Kiss has right? bobbleheads. Yeah. Kiss had figures in the 70s. They were doing it before anybody. Kiss has a comic book. <laughs> <laughs> and a movie. Right? Didn't they have a movie? Like Destroyer. Wasn't it called yeah. Destroyer? Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Un un unfortunately, they win. There's just no there's just no way to fight that war. There's no way to fight it. <laughs> so oh, Beatles. Oh. Beatles, Beatles has lunchboxes. Yeah, clothes. But I, I think Kiss 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 has lunchboxes too. Yeah, they do for sure. Um, I think it's got to be Kiss. Yeah, I think Beatles would be like the close second, but it's it's definitely Kiss. Yeah, the I Kiss lunchbox, toilet paper, and and coffins. I don't know how you beat that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Grateful Dead, they're up there too. They, dude, so many people are referencing the Kiss lunchbox, like the Kiss lunchbox. Kiss Army, they had, they had the Kiss Army member membership to to be part of the Kiss Army. Remember that? Yeah, Ch Chaz Rocker one thirty eight says Kiss had a football team. What football team did they have? Kiss had Patreon before it existed. <laughs> <laughs> it was called the Kiss Army. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, um Beatles had fake wigs. Iron yeah. Maiden had beer. Yeah. Crazy. Uh, oh, and so Terry Bear has confirmed it. Shane from In the Blues does have a signature guitar. Really? From With who? Little Crow. I'm gonna pull it up right now. We're gonna in case we all can we do, buy one. Can we do one more because this could be fun. Okay, hold on. Wait, I'm gonna share real quick just so you guys all can see. Since yeah, we left him out. out, and he's our buddy. Uh, here's Shane in the blues. This is it, man. This is the Little Crow guitar. Wow. Look That's at him. Awesome. That's actually a nice-looking guitar. And what I love most is the picture and the thing. 2500 bucks Australian, which is, you know, like $12 American, right? <laughs> I don't know how that works now. because uh, But um, it's right-handed. Yeah, that's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. But there you go. Look at that. So. All right. Last topic. Are you ready? 
Okay, last topic. I only say last topic because you were ready to cut us off after this, so I'm going to throw in one more. I think okay. you like this one. We, we got it. We can go. Signature gear that came out after the artist passed. Oh. Like, you know, I'll give you an example. The oh, John I know. Len the John Lennon Fargan amp. Really? Yeah. You know, I'm going to say right now, if on, on the record, I hate Hendrick, that stuff. Jimi Hendrix pedals. Uh, think of this: the Jimi Hendrix Digitech Wah. Right. <laughs> Digitech didn't even exist when he was alive. Right. <laughs> uh, so, so list of signature gear that came out after the artist passed. The Kurt dime Cobain. bag. Yep. The, somebody somebody nailed it already. Dirt, dime bag. Dime bag line of amps. Dude, right. I remember. I remember the that was. I forget the year. I want to say around two thousand eight, two thousand nine, somewhere on there. Could have been two thousand seven, but somewhere in those years, I remember at the Nam show when I saw the dime bag line of amps, and I was like, "What is this?" You know what I mean? Like, how can you make a line of amplifiers that he, you know? So yeah, Digitech with the Jimi Hendrix dime bag with the line of amps. Who else? Ra Razorback dime. Razorback, well, yeah, Dimebag probably, he's like the kiss of taking somebody's after they right. die and start making product like crazy. Right. You know, because they did inspired by stuff, like stuff where it's not even the stuff he used. It was just inspired. Oh, Wes Montgomery. Uh, Lennon, Kurt, oh, Lennon Rickenbacker. No, I never saw that one, but that would. Um, SRV, oh. Stevie Ray Vaughan. That came out after he passed, right? Yeah. Uh, the Yeah, I don't... Well, I don't know. Uh, it might have been. Yeah, because it came out in 96, didn't it? Yeah. The, the George Harrison Rosewood Telecaster, right? That was a right. model. Okay. That was a good one. Thanks. Um, hold on a second. Who was that? Uh, that was Will K. Thanks, Will K. Good. Bonham drum kit. <laughs> yep. Oh yeah, yeah. You know what, Michael D eight eighty three ninety three Fender Jocko Pastorius bass. Yep. Um. Yeah, Randy Rhodes models. I mean, really, it's like there's a lot of stuff that just came out, but I'm trying to think who's the most blatant. I, I Jimmy Hendrix. There's a lot of Jimmy Hendrix product that comes out. Yeah, that's still now. Yeah, like it just it was like a new fuzz pedal. You're like, how can it be a new fuzz pedal? Like, yeah. how? Um, yeah, it's you know, and you know. The, oh well, someone wrote the Metallica Cliff Burton. Uh, uh, um, they came out with the the, the Morley the, Wah. Yeah, but you know what? It was it was like his dad was involved in it. Right. You know. And uh, it was apparent. It was like his circuit. Like they didn't change it. They just put it out for his fans. You know, limited number. His dad was signing things. So right. I think that's okay. Yeah. That's not blatant. That was like a tribute. That was a genuine tribute. No. Like the dime stuff is a little carried away. The Hendrix <laughs> stuff is a little carried away. And I yeah. think that's really what we're looking at here. You know. Yeah, where you're like, well, like to me, the funny thing is the digital, the digital Jimi Hendrix was so weird to me because it's like, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's, how does, it's like, yeah. How does that oh, even there mean? it is. Jimi Hendrix Monterey Stratocaster. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. Oh, Johnny Winter. Yeah. Um, Jeff Hanneman Signature ESP. That came out after he passed. Yeah. See, I thought that was out before. Yeah. Oh, real quick. Just because somebody mentioned it, uh, they said uh, somebody said, "Hey, there's there was 700. Now there's 670, but there were 740 of us, and they were saying only 158 thumbs up. Don't forget thumbs up, guys. Yeah, let's get we a thumbs up. We uh, the uh, it, it, okay. Let's see. Um, you know what? You know another subject that ties into this. Who since we're talking about the signature gear, because this is a signature theme video, signature gear that the people that passed away. What about signature hoppers, man? 
Shaking like you were talking about hoppers. Like to me, like Paul Stanley, like you said, he was with Washburn. Then he was with uh, Ibanez. Then he was back with Washburn. Then he was Ibanez. Like there's, you know. Eddie Van lot. Halen. Yeah. He's hot. TV, hopping. Music Man, Charvel, EVH Gear. And Kramer. And Who's Kramer. And Kramer. Right? Who else? Is there, any, there might be other guitars we don't know about. Um, hoppers. <laughs> yeah. you're, a, you're a hopper. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, John Mayer. Ke John Mayer counts now because he went from Fender to PRS. I mean, I don't want to nail somebody for two hops, but Kerry we'll King him. had ESP and then BC Rich. He was with ESP for a short stay. Not every not everyone knows that. You know who else was uh who's the guy Mick uh from Slipknot, right? He was BC Rich, then Ibanez, now he's Jackson, right? Uh I know BC Mick Rich Thompson? and I know Ibanez. Yep, Mick Thompson. That's right. Yeah, but I think he's with Jackson now. Um so uh Johnny Highland. Oh, Chris, great one. Johnny Highland, man. Uh, you know, he's I love Johnny Highland as a player, and he seems like the nicest guy, but you know, he's every time I turn around, he's got like another guitar. <laughs> he's like, you know, it's PRS, then it's music man, then it's Kiesel, then it's the Chapman guitar, then it's like, you know what I mean? Uh so uh Dave Mustaine, yeah, he's another he's jumped a few because who else? Who, who did Dave Mustaine? He's always been with Dean, no? No, Dave Mustaine was Jackson, then okay. uh, Dean, and then, well, maybe just Jackson Dean. I don't know if he's had another third one. Yeah. Uh, ESP, wasn't he with ESP for a little while? Was he? He might be ESP now. <laughs> Santana, hasn't Santana always been with, uh, with uh, PRS? For a signature kind of thing, you know, right? Because yeah. we're going signature again, you know, just because they chopped. Jump brands. Yeah, We're talking about I'm not Sig talking someone that just picks up a strat and starts playing it, right? This is Paul Stanley's an offender. <laughs> Richard Richie Sambora. Dan says Richie Sambora, Kramer Fender ESP. I'm gonna one up you with the Floyd Rose guitar. That's right. That's he right. He was playing a Floyd Rose, not a guitar with Floyd Rose, but Floyd Rose but had a Floyd line of with yeah. the hollow headstock. The hollow headstock with no tuning key. So Richie Sambora That's was like right. the artist they got for that. So it was That's right. Yep. Um, Marty Freeman. Oh, yeah, definitely. Marty Freeman's been Jackson, uh, um, Jackson, Ibanez, and Paul Reed Smith. And I don't know if he's with anyone else now. Chris Broderick. He's uh, Ibanez to Jackson. So that's two. Um, Guthrie Govan, right? He was, did he, Guthrie have a, a signature, sir, though? Like he was with sir, and then he went to Charvel and has a signature, but I don't know if he had a signature with sir. So, and again, we're just talking about people who have signatures, guitars, yeah. um, that have jumped. And I think if you go from one company to, to a second company, that's a jump, but I'm talking about the people, like I said, we're talking about the offenders, right? The hoppers, the ones that are just like, it's like 10 brands deep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Um, you know, and you're after a while, you're like, what's the saying, you know, if Gus, you're in divorce, Gus G. Gus, Gus G. G went from ESP to Jackson. What was the saying? If you've been divorced, what? Might have been divorced 10 times, you know, you know kind right. of thing, right? You know, at some point, you might have to look inward a little bit. Um, let's see. Prince. I, Prince is tough because he's always got the Prince guitars, but I know different companies make them. So, uh, Satchel, still Fanter. Well, he had the Satchel Kramer, and now he has a Satchel Charvel, so that's two. Yep uh vernon I reed the question is vernon reed was hamer prs and parker that's three companies he counts is the prs still out yeah the vernon because, reed prs is current because to, to 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 be fair kind of the hamer hamer and the yeah. parker went away right <laughs> <laughs> yeah he's kind of he, he's like he's not the guy who gets divorced he's the widower <laughs> He's like, right, right. He's like Hamer. They die. Parker. They die. Yeah. We'll 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 hope the best for PRS. Uh, and and so you know, I'm a huge Vernon Reed fan. I went and saw Living Color last year, uh, and oh, they blew me away. Uh, Ola England. Look at that. Strictly yeah. seven. Washburn, seven, Washburn Solar. Solar. Yeah, three. So YouTuber with three. Yeah. There's a yeah. There's a YouTuber. He's the first YouTuber on the list. <laughs> 
the first YouTube hopper. Actually, yeah. I hopped too because I did PC Rich Diamond. Yeah. <laughs> um, he's he's one up to me though. Yes. Um, Red Beach. Uh, Red Beach was Ibanez, and now he's with Nags, right? No, who's he with? He's with somebody expensive now. Is it Nags? Does anyone know? It's an expensive company because I know his guitar is expensive now. Phil X. Uh, I don't think there was a who. What were the Phil X models? Just Framus, right? He never I, had a I Phil X model Framus. before. Because oh. again, it's a signature model. We're not talking about guys who jump brands. We're talking about guys with, uh, you know, to jump signature guitars. Um, Vandenberg. So Vandenberg is PV, and then he's now with those, uh, those like composite guitars, right? What are they called? I have no idea. Neil Schoen. Well, Neil Schoen was with Jackson. Then he was Neil Schoen, and now he's PRS, right? Because he had a he had a he had a Neil Schoen guitar. Oh, F Felix had the signature Yamaha. That's right. Oh, there you go. He had Yamaha. Um, so Bobby Beretta is about mine. So I had um. So Bobby Beretta had a a, a TTK one with BC Rich and the TTK two at Diamond. Oh, really? There's somebody out there, there with one. That both discontinued. What'd you say, Philip? Oh, uh, Brian C uh, Cummer says Reb is with. He's right. Reb Beach is with Sir. Got it. Steve Stevens was with Washburn. Who, who's he with now? He's with Nags now too, Nags, right? Nags. Nags. Yeah. So he's who I was thinking of. Nags. It's Reb Beach is with Sir. Okay. Although um, I saw him play Rebel Yell at one of those like music award things, and he was playing an EVH. Maybe yeah. it's just what was was there. I don't know. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Oh, Ola also had a Halo guitar. Did he have a Halo signature guitar? Okay, so uh, Bennett Bennett Marlowe is saying Keith Merrill had Agile Bernie Rico Jr. Strictly Seven Chapman and Schechter. <laughs> wow. I don't. I don't think those are all signatures, but I think I. I know what you mean. <laughs> um, the uh... so of all the ones we said, who are the biggest hoppers? EVH, maybe. <sighs> yeah, he's like he's gonna be like Kiss. He's gonna be hard to beat because he's how many brands now? Right, that's five brands. His, yeah, five. He's, he's five deep. He's five brands. Who beats five brands? A uh, signature model, right. right? Five brand signature model. Dimebag Daryl was Washburn and Dean. That's you know for I, I understand Randall and Crank all that stuff, but right now we're just sticking to guitars. Amps are, you know, let's be honest. Most of the guys don't even have their own amps. That's probably the least endorsed thing ever. So let's uh, do before we go. Let's do signature series amps. Okay, what's the okay? That's this topic. What's the subcategory? What are we looking for? Most expensive. How most, about just what? What are there? Current ones. Um. I don't know. I, I would say any ones because I don't know if there's a whole lot out there. Uh, like it actually bears the artist's name. Oh yeah, yeah. It's gotta have their name. Well, yeah, it's like have uh, their name. Evron says Bonamassa Fender. Okay. That's that and think of this, that was released on the fourth. So Joe Bonamassa's so, got a fender. So Slash had a marshal that had his name. Yep, it did. Eddie Van Halen had uh a PV that had his name and an EVH, so he's got two. Yep. And um Ingve Malmstein had a Marshall. Yes. And um See, even Joe Satch didn't have a Marshall. They called he does it. now. Oh it, it doesn't have his name. It's a, but it's but it is his model. They describe it as the Joe Saturani model, but it doesn't have his name. But he okay. has the PV, he has the JSX. That's right. That's right. So so we'll give him that because and he Kerry, actually has two PVs because he had the Colossus too. Right. Ke Kerry King had the JCM 800 and um, uh, Zach Wilde had the JCM 800. Yep. As did Slash. And, Tony, uh, Tony Iomi had the, uh, someone just wrote it. Uh, what is the, the um, I don't remember. Uh, Iron something, Iron Heart. Yes. Uh, that was Ingle, right? Yeah, I think so. So Ingle, Tony Iommi is Ingle. 
And then Brent Hines is Orange Terror. Yep. Um. Wow, we're already at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine Steve, artist amps. Steve I Legacy. Oh yeah, Steve I. Um, mm. who else? Who else got a signature amp? John oh, Mayer. Tony Iommi had the Laney. Laney. Okay, so John Mayer's PRS, and Two Rock. You know what? John Mayer's in the uh, Eddie Van Halen Club. He's got two different artists uh, amps. Two John Lennon. Brands. John Lennon had that amp. John Lennon. Tony Iommi. I said that one already. What was it? Fargan? Far, Fargan? Yeah, F Fargan. Fargan or whatever. Um, who else we got? Uh, Richie Codson had a few signature amps, but... Uh, Ola, Ola England had the Satan. The Randall Oh, Satan. yeah, yeah, the Randall Satan. <laughs> Ola, the Satan. It, it was Satan, but it was like in giant letters, too, with that huge... Oh, I think it was so weird. Okay, um... Uh, oh, Richie Blackmore has an Ingle. Okay, that's... Man, see again, way more Phil, than we already thought. Phil X had the evil robot Phil X signature series. That's the Freeman, right? He still has that. No, no. The evil robot was its own thing. Oh, evil robot. Yeah, and now he has. So he's in the two club too because he has a yeah. free Freeman. Pete Thorne. Yep, he has a Sir. Oh, PRS the Tremonti. The Tremonti. Yep, Tremonti just got into the club. The Randy wow. Rhodes 1959 yep. R. Randy Rhodes. Chapman and Bia with the uh, victory amps. I think yep. does it bear their name though. Uh, well, I don't think the Kraken has Beer's name on it, but uh, Chapman's name's definitely on the. Uh, okay, it's uh, got to have their R. name. So RD one, so Chapman, not Beer. Here are um, Chappers Silverback, but even the Silverback, I don't think is. Oh, yeah. Chapman. No, the the Silverback is his too. Okay. Already, either way, he's covered. He's got definitely Greg Cox got his own his amp, right? George Lynch. They say George Lynch is the biggest hopper. Well, George Lynch had the the yeah. he Headhunter Randall. Well, got, yeah, he's had oh, a lot and of he also has the um the 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 modules. George Lynch yeah. has Randall uh signature series amps. Yeah. Uh, yep. So Kirk Hammett had a Kirk Hammett had a. Signature Randall. Yep. Nuno Bittencourt had a signature Randall. Yep. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, the Hellwin, the Schechter Hellwin. Oh, Sinister Gates. Yeah, the Hellwin. That was <laughs> successful as heck. That was quick. <laughs> yeah. Sinister Gates. Um, Jim Root, Orange Terror. Yep. Jim Root. I should have brought a book. Uh, uh, Steve I. Carver. Steve I. Jerry Cantrell. Did you get that? Yeah, but what amp is that? Friedman. Friedman. Yeah. Jerry Cantrell. Friedman. Um, oh, really? Mick Tom Thompson has a Rivera? Well, there you go. Mick Thompson has a Rivera. Uh, Tactical Six String says, yeah, but they all use F at Axe FX now. <laughs> but uh, Scott Ian. Yeah, the Randall's Scott Ian. Scott right? Ian. Scott Ian. But he was more of a module. No. Yeah, he you know he had his own amp. He did have his own. Yeah, yeah, he did. Uh, he did. you know, Dimebag Daryl technically had two. He had the crank and we didn't have a Randall. He had the crank and then he had the dime amp. Do I don't know but if we can. Dime Ten. wasn't. I think that was a play on words. I don't think yeah. they were calling that the Dimebag Daryl amp. But, they just oh, called it dime. Oh, Misha Mansur and the PV. Yep. Uh, and um. Yeah, we already got. Uh, you know who else? Uh, Frank Gambali has a uh, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Mark Bass, but it's not Mark Bass. What's the guitar oh, version of Mark Bass? The Warhead. Who's that? Oh, that was Dimebag. Yeah, Dimebag Randall had the Warhead. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and then tell uh, and then like I said, Frank Gambali. Santana has the Boogie. Yep, that's the King Snake. Uh, um, what else you guys got? Uh, Richie Cotson. I, I just don't know what the amps are. So, uh, David Grissom has a PRS. Yep, the amp. David Grissom. Wow. Oh, so Chad says the PV doesn't have Misha's name on it. Oh, okay. We know it's his amp, though. We should we should check. We should snope that. 
<laughs> yeah, DV Mark. That's what I was thinking. You, ah, uh, boy, uh, boys put that the the Frank and Bali was DV Mark. I knew it was like from the Mark base. Um. Oh, Richie has a, a model with victory now. Oops. All right, fine. <laughs> nice, Alex Brian. Lyson, Hughes and Kidner, Brian May Vox. Uh. <laughs> um. Well, Mick Thompson has a diesel. Doesn't so Mick Thompson had a Rivera and a diesel, <laughs> right? <laughs> All right, sure, why not? Um, what else do we got? Uh, the Lemmy Marshall head, yeah, right. Lemmy had yes, that giant had Lemmy the base head, yeah, the Le Lemmy. Lemmy head, yep, Lemmy. Um, and Richie also had a cornford. <laughs> oh man. Who else? Sammy Hagar had a blue voodoo uh, signature series. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I don't know if he got his name on it. He had ones that were red. Um, and yes, the edge from a uh, YouTube had a, a fender amp with his name. And so did Eric Clapton had a fender amp with his name. Dave on it. Friedman. Yeah. But why is Dave free? He's an amp company. No, I'm sorry. Um, um, George Benson fender. Yeah. Who's this? Who's the singer of Megadeth? Uh, Dave Mustaine. Oh, I'm sorry, Mustaine. I, I said Friedman. But he had, but he had the Marshall. He had the Marshall uh, micro stack that had his name on it. It yeah. was the it was the Dave Mustaine Marshall micro stack. Yeah. Well. Uh, what else? Eric Johnson has. Does he have a signature Roland amp? <laughs> right, or is it a Roland amp? He just has a signature thing that plugs into it. I think he has the tube. The new yeah. or something like that. We got Yinve's Marshall. John Petrucci's Boogie. God, I feel like there's more amps than guitars. <laughs> you two had a deluxe Fender amp? Signature yeah, series? the Edge. Yeah, the Edge. Huh. I think it's current. I think they still make it. And if not, oh. it was up till last year. Uh, Al Demo had a KMD amp, but... Greg, how had a DV mark? Was it a signature though? I think it was a signature, right? Nuno Bin and Hort Randall. We already did that. The Lynch box. We already did that. Uh Ingle. Oh, Steve Morris had a had a uh Ingle. Wow. I'm looking uh, around at my collection over here. Hmm. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is anyone else? Yeah, it was a blues coop module. Thanks, um, Chris B. For yeah, Can't well, that's more. You know, yeah, we're getting towards the bottom of the barrel. Um, we got the invective. Yeah, Josh Smith Morgan. We got the slash amp. Yep, Milkman amp. John Mayer Milkman. I don't remember him having that, but I guess if they say he did, he did. Um, what else? I think that's, I think that might be it. How about signature series strings? Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. Let's try this. Okay. Ready for fun. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48 signature amps is what we came up with. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. Hendrix Marshall amp. Yep. I got that one. Yep. Wow. It's a, uh, that's pretty, uh, yeah, way more than I thought. So, <laughs> and then nice. You guys did great. See, I knew that if we collectively brought everyone in, we could solve the mystery of what's the most expensive artist guitar, the cheapest artist guitar, and who has jumped the most brands, <laughs> who has the most expensive YouTube guitar. Um, let's see. Yeah, it was pretty, uh, it's pretty impressive. And then what we'll do is we'll end it on this note. Okay. Ready tone King. Yes. Everybody by votes. What artist do you feel never had a, a signature guitar amp 
either one, doesn't matter, that you feel should have? I already know my answer, and I just thought of it as soon as I was saying this out loud right now. Jimmy Page. So, Jimmy, a uh, guitar amp. Say, which one do you think you should have had? A guitar. Guitar. You know who I think it is? Mick Mars from Motley Crue. I can't believe he never had a signature guitar amp. And that guy has some riffs. Yeah. You know, and the, I, I saw him once in an interview and he said he just never thought, you know, it was, he was, you know, he never saw himself as a signature artist. So he just didn't do it. Someone put Jakey e. Lee, but Jakey e. Lee does have a signature. He had a signature with ESP and now with Charvel. Yeah, with Charvel. Keith Richards. BB King has a signature guitar. He has Lucille, right? He has the BB King uh, Gibson. Phillip Angus McKnight. Young. Philip McKnight. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Got to get that on the bucket list. Yeah. Uh, Jeff Beck has a Strat. Roy Gallagher has a guitar with Fender. Um, Gary Moore, does he have one? I don't know. I don't know. Um, Frank Zappa, that's interesting. Joe Perry. See, yeah, you know what? I, Joe, Joe Perry has a slide. I have one. It's porcelain, but and it's got his name on it, but I don't know if he has a guitar and amp. Right? Um, yeah, I see J Gary Moore a lot. I keep thinking Gary Moore. Oh, so Gary, Gary Moore had a signature Gibson. Thank you, Phil Smith, uh, on it as always. Uh, Tom Morello. There's a Zappa SG. Now, is that Dweezil Zappa's SG or is that Frank Zappa's SG? Yeah, so I think you... Chuck Berry, I keep seeing Chuck Berry a lot. A lot of people saying Joe Joe Perry and Chuck Berry. So uh, Brian May had a guitar. He made his guitar and then they did a copy of it. So interesting enough, right? It's interesting to see who did and who didn't. So what was your answer? Mine was Mick Mars, remember? Oh, Mick Mars, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I agree with you on that. Although I think that when he was playing Kramer's back in the day, there was no Mick Mars, nothing. Nope. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Cause he had the Kramer telecaster with the glass yes. with the mirror yeah. pickle. Yep. I thought for some reason, I thought that was his. Um, James saying Roy Buchanan guitar or amp. Oh yeah. That's a good one too. So, uh, someone said, uh, that page did have a Les Paul. Did he? I don't know. It's possible. Paige C had a signature Les Paul, didn't he? Oh, they, I don't know. CC DeVille, that's a good one. He should have had a signature series BC Rich Gunslinger. Well, let me tell you, man, if if the 80s revolution was now, CC DeVille would have a guitar. Yes. <laughs> There's no way. He'd have a Chapman. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, Joe Walsh, Paul Allender. Paul, so? Oh, Paul Allender. See, Paul Allender had a, a a signature PRS. That's right. He did. Yep. Oh, Will K is pointing out Roy Gallagher had no signature series until after his death. So he actually falls into the category that TK started earlier, which is signatures after they died. Right? So he falls in that category. So, yeah. Interesting. All right. Well, I think on that note, we'll wrap it up. You got anything you want to say before we go? No, just uh, let's get a thumbs up on the way out. And thanks for hanging out. Um, Philip, thank you for having me. This was great. I appreciate it. And uh, lots of familiar names in here. Uh, glad I was able to hang out with you all tonight. Have a great weekend. Yeah. Thank well, you guys for hanging because it was late and fun. And uh, I'm glad you guys uh, were able to uh, our understand the craziness of what me and the tone king wanted to do tonight <laughs> yeah this was a lot of fun so all right guys we're gonna call it uh as always until next time uh know your gear <laughs>